Welcome to the game room. Tonight we're going to take a look at Talisman Batman Super Villains Edition, a Dark Knight themed <laughs> version of the classic roll and move game from Games Workshop. Before we start, please be aware that the op provided us with a review copy of this Batman version of Talisman. All right, besides the super long name, <laughs> Talisman Batman Super Villains Edition was designed by Robert Harris and Patrick Marino. Features art by Ross Taylor. I was first published in 2019, just last year, by The Op, better known for many years as USAopoly. Talisman Batman plays two to six players, and here's the shocking part for every Talisman fan ever, is a game takes about 45 minutes to about two hours. To get a good look at what you get with a copy of this new rethemed version of Talisman, check out our Talisman Batman Super Villains Edition <laughs> unboxing video on YouTube. We're going to see how many times we can say it today. So I had to shrink our note. font just to get it onto the screen today. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> some things of note for what you get in this no, Batman version of Talisman. There are 12 characters. These are all well-known Batman villains, and you get a really sweet-looking miniature for each of them. There's even a mini for Batman himself as well. The board is notable because it is huge. It's got a really cool aesthetic. It looks like a bunch of photographs of various parts of a, a prison, Arkham Asylum, taped to a board, which just looks cool, right? Like it's the, you're putting down the breakout map in front of the other inmates, right? It, it, which is neat, but it's like four times bigger than the original Talisman board that I grew up with. Which, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Some extra room to move around is, is nice, but it is a bit of a table hog. That being said, I think the component quality overall is pretty nice. I gotta say, yeah, but the board's big enough you have to stand up to read it. Like, if I had a normal dining room table, maybe it would work because I'd have a player with four players on all sides and they could read it for you. But at my table, it involves, like, getting up and walking around to read parts of the board. Now, thankfully, I know Talisman pretty well, so I got to know the board pretty quickly and we started to memorize it. But it's huge. Like, it's, it's ridiculously huge. And then added to that, in this game, when you play cards, instead of playing them on the board, you're meant to put them on the outside edge. And then for inner realms, you put them on the outside edge with a marker on them. So it actually spreads bigger than the board. Like, to be honest, I think it's actually an issue. Like, there are going to be people who can't play this game because it won't fit on their table. So, uh, ignoring the rest of that. So, now, one of the things to note is that this board has a bunch of dark artwork. And that's the thing. This game is dark. This is Dark Knight Batman. This is not Batman the Animated Series or the old Campy 60 show that I grew up with. No Biff Bam Pows here. This game is all about evil villains trying to escape a prison, features dark artwork and even darker themes. Themes like drug use, psychotherapy, make this a less than friendly family game. Family friendly family game? That came out weird. Family friendly game. Instead, the art's solid. It's well done and very thematic. It's just darker than I would have liked. Uh, I have to think that most people these days, uh, outside of the Lego Batman fans, uh, and and the older uh, animated Batman series or the uh, animated Batman series are more used to this. Uh, this is in in line with most of the Arkham series of games and mm. other uh, other Dark Knight material that has come out recently. But if you've got kids, you just have to remember that it is yeah. uh, on the you know it's on that darker side. See, with us, for even the artwork, we're like, maybe our kids would be fine. But once you get into the, you pop some pills, roll on the D6 table to see what happens, we're like, no, that's not something I, my kids need to play, at least at this point in their life. As for the rest of the components, everything else is good to great, either awesome or, or serviceable, right? The, the one thing that is great that I love, one of my favorite components in here are these six-sided dice. They're, they're like the dark gray with bright yellow pips, and instead of a one, they have the bat symbol. And I'm like, if I ever play in a superhero theme powered by the apocalypse game i'm stealing 2d6 out of this game just to play that or any other supers game that uses d6 i love these so enough about the components how about we move on to gameplay all right so to start a game you're each going to get a character there's a way to randomize them you get this stat tracker so unlike some of the previous editions of talisman you're not stacking up stuff there's just a dial to track your two main stats of strength and cunning. Um, you get some starting coins, which are actually plastic, which is nice, and fate tokens. The fate tokens are uh, Harvey Dent's two-faced, two-sided coin, another nice thematic touch. Uh, you're going to put your mini on your starting spot. You place Batman on the guard post, and you're good to go. Talisman has been this for years and always will be. Roll a d6 and move that many spaces. When you get on that space, you're going to do the thing on that space. 
The board is separated into three floors. Movement between floors is restricted, only happens through specific encounters or going to specific spaces. After you move, you encounter the space you land in. Most of them are just a matter of drawing random cards. They're called encounter cards. On the outer realm, most of it's draw one card. In the inner realm, most of it's draw two cards. There is one deck of cards for each of the floors, which is actually a huge difference from the Talisman I grew up with. It just had one big adventure deck for everything. So they have tried to sort of uh, increase the theming with that and, and, and also do some difficulty works with that, which has had mixed results. Yeah. That we'll, we'll get to an issue yeah. with those encounter decks later. It's a, a big issue. Now, some space on the board have pre-printed stuff on them. The stuff you do besides drawing cards, there's no way I'm going to cover them all because there's tons. Uh, basically, you land there, you read the card, you do it. So an example is you could fight the security guard to move up to the second floor. Or you can go to the corrupt guard in the supply closet to buy stuff off them. You get lost in the dark room. Or you can go to the second floor and make a deal with Don Carmine Falcone for a security key. And the security keys in this are basically talismans. And, of course, there's a ton more. There's lots of spots on these boards that all do neat things. So the fans of Batman will really enjoy the thematic nature of it, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot there in the game to connect you to the Batman universe. Yep. Totally agree. Now, encounter cards. These are a huge mix of things. There's objects, strangers, enemies, followers, and places. Each card is numbered. So if you have to draw more than one, you encounter them in order, which is kind of interesting. And what's really tough about that is enemies all have the same number, so they gang up on you, which, again, seems pretty thematic. Objects are picked up and carried. Uh, they can improve your basic abilities. You can only carry so many of them until you get, um, there's, I forget what it's called. There's like a pouch that lets you carry more. Followers will also join up with your villain and give you some kind of bonus. Strangers and places are things you can encounter multiple times. They tend to stay on the board. So if you hit a place, you read the card, you do what's on the card, then you put the card on the board. And then the next person that lands there can do it. Strangers are the same thing. Uh, enemies of course have to be fought or avoided there are a few different abilities that characters have to avoid things or you fight them so uh, when you when you really kind of extract the the theme and things from it it is in many ways your bog standard roll and move game yeah no it is and fighting is dead simple it's the same in every version of talisman I've ever played including this one roll a d6 for each side add your applicable stat and any bonuses whoever gets higher wins nice and simple defeated enemies you get to keep and can trade in as xp to level up which is a little bit different than the original rules for the amount but the the basic mechanics the same players if they get beat lose health if you run out of health you die interestingly though you're not eliminated there is no player elimination in this game which is another big change from the original talisman because the original the goal was to be the last one standing when you die in this one, you just create a new character, and you actually get to keep most of what was collected, which is uh, you get a big boost. Like, you don't lose too much. You don't start from scratch by dying. That's uh, certainly a, a nice bonus over a lot of games and massively over the original Talisman. Mm -hmm. Now, moving. This is, a, this is something new to this for Batman, though I hear it's in one of the older expansions called the Reaper for Talisman. If you roll a one, which is the bat symbol, as I mentioned on the dice, in addition to moving, you move Batman. If you're able to move Batman onto a spot with a villain, Batman tries to beat up the villain. Batman's stats are determined by what floor he's on. So if you fight Batman on floor one, he's pretty weak, but on floor two, he's pretty tough. And in floor three, he's a flipping 12, which is the max your stats can go to. Similarly, if a villain lands on another villain square, you can choose to attack your opponents. But in this one, you don't have to do life damage. You can actually steal objects, which is uh, an interesting. Again, that goes back to the original talisman. You keep playing like this. Roll, move, encounter the spot. Roll, move, encounter the spot until someone gets up to the third floor, turns in a security key, and beats the crap out of Batman in the final room. So have your talisman and beat the demon lord and escape the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's pretty much the same, right? Except the, the, the original ending was completely different. So before I get to my thoughts on the Batman version, I do need to note that I have been a huge fan of talisman for pretty much as long as I can remember. I, I it, it was probably, besides a white dwarf, it was like the first hobby purchase I bought from Leisure World at Devonshire Mall here in Windsor. My parents gave me allowance for the first time, and I bought this game called Talisman, the Magical Quest game. I think it was in like 1982. It was early 80s. To this date, I have probably... It's going to be close compared to a couple games like Seven Wonders now, but I have probably played more games of Talisman than any other game over time. But none of those plays are recent because Talisman has become less and less fun. And now it's the original is a nostalgia trip. Like I break it out 
just because I'm like, oh, I grew up and I love this. And I want to show it off to people who never got to play it back in the day. Because the whole thing about Talisman, and this is true of this edition too, is that this is an experience game. This is not a strategy game. This is not a war game. This is not a miniature game. This is all about the story you tell and the experience. It has very little to do with player skill or system mastery. Like, yes, okay, you have some choices every turn, but it's mostly to do with the story you tell as you play. Embracing this is the key to enjoying any Talisman game. And, and in some ways, this is very little different than a game of Clue. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's a simple roll and move, but there are components and aspects to the game which can exceed the simple mechanic of the roll and move to become that game. And so you're telling the story about Mr. Mustard with the pipe in the kitchen uh, and not just rolling and moving to see what shows up on your checkbox. And, and Talisman is, is very little different than that. Uh, it's just a little bit more involved of a story mm-hmm. than, than Clue. Yep. Now, the other problem with the original Talisman, the Talisman I grew up with, has to do with game length. Uh, the joke I like to tell is that the first hour of Talisman is awesome, and the last hour of Talisman is awesome as you race for the Crown of Command, but the six hours in the middle kind of stink. And that's true. The original game could go on way longer than it was actually fun to play. And it was a number of mechanics. Like These include the winner being the last person standing. Whenever you have a game where the winner is the last person standing, it's one of those once someone starts winning, everyone teams up on that person and beats them down. This is the same problem that makes Munchkin not a great game because it can go on forever. The other issues, the the original game had an issue with the roll and move mechanic where you needed to move the exact number to land on the right square to be able to get to the next floor. And that would happen where you just could not roll that two and for turn after turn after turn. And then there were some spells and encounter cards that basically reset you back to zero. So playing for four hours and pulled your character up and you got 12 strength and 12 crap and 82 items and then suddenly someone cast a toad spell on you you drop all your stuff you go back to level one and then someone beats you up as the toad and you lose everything and and start from scratch that's a terrible mechanic well i am pleased to report that every single one of these issues has been fixed in this batman themed version of talisman i think it will be a real surprise to anyone to hear us rant a little bit about uh, anything that takes players out of games whether it be uh, you know, resetting you back to zero and throwing you back to the beginning of the game mm. or miss a turn. Uh, they're not mechanics we enjoy here at all. Yeah, they did keep miss a turn. I, I They did not fix that one. Miss a turn is still a thing in Talisman, unfortunately. I, they they probably could have come up with something better. And you can still be turned into a toad, but you don't lose any of your stats or anything. I forget what it is. You become corrupted instead. So here's what they've done to fix it. So to improve game length. A couple of things they've done. One is you don't need the exact roll to land on the important spot. So most of the time it's roll and move, but like to fight the guard to go to the floor too, as long as you have enough to reach the guard, you can do it. So that's awesome. Same thing with the, uh, oh, I always have the portal of power. I forget what it's called in Batman. This is the problem I have with playing Talisman Batman. Whatever the room is to get to the third floor. Again, you don't need an exact roll. If it's two away and you roll a four, you get there, which is awesome. Um, to level up now, it used to always be seven experience. Now it's down to five. That's surprising how much quicker you level up because of that you also get to raise one of your core statistics by one at the start of the game so it's basically like starting at level two in talisman they rebalance the feet deck which is the equivalent of the spell deck which removes some of the more powerful spells like finger of death was one of them and the one that turns you into a toad for example and they completely rebuilt the third floor One of the problems in the original Talisman is you would get to the third floor and you would decide if you want to go left or right, if you wanted to basically complete the game using strength or craft. And one of the ways you just kept rolling dice against death until you either died or death died. Another way you rolled like 3d6 and subtracted your stat and teleported somewhere back on the board. Again, resetting so you have to get all the way back to the middle. All that's gone. The third floor is just another floor. You go in a little spiral and you draw encounter cards. Along with these improvements, I'm certain there's some other tweaks, like that some of the object powers and the characters and the, the, they just seem to be tweaked in minor ways. I mean, it's, it's hard not to slowly improve a game after 30 years, even if you are just retheming it. Uh, problems become obvious yeah. over time. Now, besides these improvements, a huge amount of this game, though, is just Talisman. It, it's, it's Batman Talisman. It's the same board, same cards with different names. 
like while playing and i just did it earlier i called the the, the portal from the second to the third floor of the portal of power because that's what's called in the original i kept doing this i'd be like oh that's the desert oh that's the crags yeah if you roll a six you're gonna get a strength there even though it was called like the dark room or something so anyone who's familiar with talisman at all is gonna recognize the majority of what's in this box for what it is it's a retheme it really is now this isn't necessarily a bad thing it's just what it is and to be honest it's exactly what i expected when this game showed up though you should be aware that playing it with someone like mo could become horribly frustrating if you aren't a talisman fan and would like to just experience the game in the batman theme yeah true enough <laughs> if you're playing with me i'm probably going to pull you out of the batman universe a couple of times so, like with all of this, because it's a retheme, you get all the good stuff about Talisman, all the fun adventure, the fun stories, the silly things that happen. Um, like we had the the closet that was filled with smoke where you just found random money all the time for the one game because we happened to get a couple cards in a row together that had it that every time you went to the locker room. Oh, there was a rocker room. There, there was a, a horde of enemies just like hoarded to the locker room. You know, you get those stories, but you also get all the bad things. Um as I said, Talisman, this one too, is an experience. It's it's a game, but it's not a gamer's game. It's not a strategy game. It's a roll and move. Sometimes the dice don't cooperate. It's highly random, both due to the dice, plus there's the vagaries of the encounter deck. You never know which cards you're going to get. And I find almost every game, someone gets left behind due to bad draws, where someone else just gets like an early advantage and can kind of way earlier than expected start heading to the middle. But again, this is an experience. You 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 play Talisman to see who will win, not necessarily to win. Right. You want to you want to enjoy this, you know, in this case, this fantastic theme of the Batman world and the Arkham Asylum world and and the villains and and tell a story about your interplay on the way to somebody beating up the bat. Yep. And getting out. Like that's the whole thing. You need your key card, you get out of Arkham and Batman's at the front door. That's that's basically your theme here. Now, unfortunately, there is one major problem that is not a Talisman problem here with this particular printing. Talisman Batman Super Villains Edition, and that is the encounter deck, specifically the Thor 3 encounter deck, the last power part. I have no idea what happened here, but this deck makes no sense. By the time you get to the final floor of the game, you expect to face the hardest challenges. Everything ramps up from floor 1 to floor 2. Everything ramps up. You expect the third floor to ramp up. Instead, it has you facing some of the weakest enemies in the game. Enemies with the strength and craft, sorry, strength and cunning of two. You also encounter a stranger that will greatly reward one specific alignment, whereas there's three alignments in the game. The opposite alignment is rewarded on floor one. Like, it just doesn't make sense. When half the characters are each alignment, why is that in the middle? And then there's the, the EMT, the EMT card, which gives you a reward for bringing it to a spot on the second floor but you get that card on the third. And once you're there, you really don't want to turn around. Like it doesn't, it makes no sense. All I can think of is there was a printing error. Something happened when splitting up the encounter decks for this attachment of talisman, something with the, the I don't know. I, I have no idea. What I strongly suggest you do before playing this game, even the first time, like if you're just crying, don't bother trying to experience it out of the box. Shuffle the second and third floor decks together and use both of those for the second and third floor. All right. Well, that's uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh... Seems like a, a pretty huge gaffe. I'll, we'll have to definitely take a look and see if there is a uh, some strangeness that uh, is re reported elsewhere. Yeah, let's, I've seen other people complaining about it, but I didn't see a fix anywhere. So now throwing that out, let's ignore the encounter deck problem. There is a ton to like in Talisman Batman Super Villains Edition. As long as you realize, as we said multiple times, and I, it, this needs to be driven home, you are in for an experience, not a test of skill. I was amazed at being able to get in a full talisman experience with four players in under two hours. Like to me, that blows me away. The Batman theme is very well done. Not really kid friendly, but it wasn't meant to be just something to realize. And the components are great. Miniatures are brilliant. And I got to say, like, if you are a Batman fan and you like miniatures, you might want to pick this up just for the set of miniatures. Like there's 13 miniatures in this box. It might be worth it just for the price of admission, just to get those miniatures. If you're a fan of Talisman and Blackman, buy it. Like, there's no reason not to if you like both these things. Now, if you're just a Talisman fan, it's up to you. Like, if a Batman theme seems, re-theme seems cool to you, pick it up. Because that's all it really is, is a re-theme. Where I think the big opportunity for this game is, though, is for Batman fans who may not be used to playing hobby board games. Like, I think this could be a great gateway game to designer games. Like, a great gateway. 
for people who never liked Talisman, this is probably not going to win anyone over. Unless maybe you only played it way back when I did and are used to games being eight hours long. So maybe give it one shot to see if it being in under two hours sells you on it. But it's not probably not going to trade anyone over. So interestingly, uh, one of the designers or developers uh, has said, during testing, we tried putting all of the hardest challenges in level three. It makes for a much longer game experience because the failure rate was high. To keep the game length shorter than the original Talisman, we opted to make the inner region more manageable so that players would have a fighting chance against Batman. I still think that that might be, I, I don't know, that sounds so, like an excuse. So they're just, that doesn't explain they're the ENT it. card. They're, yeah. they're trying. Yeah. Like, if there's, the, I could see having some twos and threes in there to give you one more chance to level up, maybe. But having that one card that rewards half the players randomly be in the middle when the others in the outer realm doesn't make sense. And that ENT card, like you bring it to the hospital and you get money. You don't need money. If you're at the point where you're going to face Batman, you don't need another three coins. Like there's no reason you would get in the tower, get that card, and then declare you're leaving because that's what you have to do on the tower. And then you start moving backwards to go all the way back, to go there, to get three gold. To do what before going back up? Like, I I don't know. That seems like an excuse to me. It's just not logical which cards are there. Well, for a more in-depth look at Talisman Batman Super Villains Edition, head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews. Well, let's take a moment to check in with the lobby, our chat room here on Twitch. Any Talisman fans in the house? How about Batman fans? Any thoughts? Anyone played this one? Uh, a number of people are saying that they actually threw out the levels completely and actually and shuffled, shuffled all three decks together. That, that was the original Talisman, Lex. Uh, but not. yeah, the EMT is, is definitely called out even but, after, like, why? Even after it makes the no designer. Sense. Uh, so Patrick Marino was the one who, who jumped in and, and talked about it. And every, afterwards, uh, everyone's like, okay, but what about the EMT? Exactly. What is this garbage? <laughs> what, what's this garbage? That one, and like I said, I can't remember the other one. The one that rewards the chaotic alignment, but not the righteous alignment. Like, it's fine. If you want to reward chaotic and righteous, put them in the same zone. Like, make it fair. Because there's equal number of characters under each alignment. Like, why are you just rewarding the chaotic players on the third floor? So, like, now there's a strategy of try to get your alignment changed to chaotic before you go to the third floor. And the other thing is it's a place. And it's a place where you can – It's is it the first person that lands on it? There's another card that's in the third floor. And I can't remember what it is. But you put counters on it, and everyone that lands on it gets something. Right. Well, once you pass it, you can't go back. Like, that's part of the third floor. So why would you have a spot that most people can land on? Like, it's right. just and, – and the other thing is the third floor deck is tiny. Like, it's it's smaller than all the other ones. Like, I honestly thought maybe I had them backwards. Right. That the one deck is supposed to be the middle and the two is the outer, but there's not enough cards to fill the outer board. And, and deranged. Because I actually have that there. Deranged, deranged is the toted. That's what the, the toted. Toted is, toted is deranged. Okay, I couldn't remember. Um, See, I, again, I keep using the real term. So, yes, if you want to play this game with me, I'm going to bring you out of the Batman <laughs> Uh, interestingly, the what there is in the uh, in the files on Board Game Geek are a number of um, homebrew card editions and other things. Oh yeah, probably uh, stuff rethemed from the other to to, to fix to sort of you know help out a little bit <laughs> and uh, you know add some new uh, bat signal cards and some new uh, tokens and things. Oh, that's cool. See, like the end of points out. So two two of us are playing right the first time. We get to the third floor. We cycled through the deck so quickly. The your alignment is chaotic card came up three times. And D was the one that was chaotic. I was the one that was righteous. So she got three, and it's literally the most powerful card in the game because you can get a life, a strength, a cunning, a fate point, or a coin. It's you can have right. any of the good things. Free. Like just for landing. And then yeah, Maze played it with us. So we do have someone in the chat who actually has played with us, which if other two of us, if all four of us were in the third floor, we would have just cycled through that deck every round. Right. It just, it makes no sense. And I, I think there are excuses. I don't know. I think that's the, there's lots of bad flag. You got to say something. Like, so, yeah, I, to me, I think, I mean, I get the, the putting two and two and three together, but it seems like putting all three together and just doing the shuffle. No, nah, because there is a ramp between one and two. There definitely was. There was definitely, definitely a ramp up between the two. Right. And there's items that you get in one that let you get to two, which wouldn't make right. sense to be in the two deck. Like those decks make sense. Like you right. get the, again, I know Talisman. You get the axe in floor <laughs> one, which means if you go to a forest, you can build a raft to go to the inner realm. Well, whatever the hell, it, I think it's like the, the key card or something. So you get the key card in realm one, which lets you port over in any office, I think is the equivalent. Like I said, I'm 
I'm terrible for it because I played so many games of Paladin. Like, literally, I'm playing, and Deanna's like, it says roll this. I'm like, yeah, if you roll a one, you're lost. If you roll a two, you get attacked with a thing, strength four. If you roll a four to five, nothing happens. You roll a six, you get a strength. She's like, how did you know that? And I'm like, because that's the Craigs. She's like, well, no, it's the dark room. And I'm like, yeah, but it's the Craigs. Right. Lock picks, yes. Sorry, it's lock picks. You get a set of lock picks. The lock picks are the axe. They give you plus one craft. And if you're in any office or dark room, you can use the lock picks to go across the other thing. Yeah. And yeah, yeah like as May says, it. it's still a fun game. It's oh, just yeah. got some problems, and that one it's hack that one. needs it's to be made. You need, you need to you need to hack the decks. Yeah, uh, but which is why I said there. like the first time you play. Like I normally, I always say play by the rules as written at least once. Don't. This is one exception. This is the exception that proves the rule. Just either shuffle the decks together or at least shuffle the twos and threes together and play. What I am tempted to do is make my own three, but then I'd have to sleep my cards. But I am tempted to, to build my own three deck. Right. That, that is like, and I, I don't know. I could see not putting all the toughest stuff. Like, you don't want to put Batwoman and Robin both in there because they're both like an eight and a 12. Like, right. they're really tough. And especially if you drew both at once, like, that's tougher than the main boss. Right. So the original Talisman, I talked about this more on the, in the review. The original Talisman was a you you um last man standing and the end fight was not a fight when you got to the end you got this item called the crown of command and what it let you do was then teleport to any other player's sp space and it gave you an automatic 12 strength or craft and almost every time i played talisman because everyone knew that was the goal is they leveled up higher than that so when you got to the crown of command it would actually make you weaker because your strength would already be higher right. so we used to house rule it that you still got to keep it like you didn't you didn't have to go down to 12 because the wording was like set your strength to 12 which would be if you had a 14 it sets it to 12 <laughs> you grab the crown first which made no sense the game got way better when they put out the the i think it was called the adventure where there were six different possible endings and we used to take the crown of command out because it was that's the one that would make the game too long because if the other players just leveled up enough and then there were so many healing cards that like the guy with the crown of command would come over and beat you up, but then you just move to the infirmary or the chapel and you'd spend a gold and get all your health back. Like it was just that's why the game went on forever. And by removing that, it doesn't matter how well the other players are doing. You just got to beat Batman. And I love that. That's that's what really does make it quick. And Batman has a twelve, and you can pretty easily figure out your odds of winning if the, he's going to roll twelve plus a d six and you're going to roll your stats plus a d six. Right. Again, never played Talisman. But I'm torn on this. Love Batman, but hearing such issues could make it a no go. Yeah, I, I, Talisman's a thing. Like, like if you like Tales of the Arabian Nights or Above and Below, and the, like, there's no read from a book, but it just it's the story. It's the maze in the chat now. Maybe she can remember what happened. It was the steam room, and we had like four cards in the steam room, and we were joking about it all the time. And I remember we did have the one, the one uh, locker that just kept having money in it. So we made the joke at one point. Batman stopped by, so we we're like he's Bruce Wayne. And he put more money in it because he was trying to set a trap. Like that was a, an emergent story that we told while playing Talisman Batman. It's fun. It's it's way better than the original. Like to be honest, what I am didn't again didn't talk about here that I did talk about in the 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 um, blog version is what I don't know is how many of these revisions are in Talisman Fourth Edition Revised, which is the current printing of Talisman. Right. I have a feeling it might be an even more direct port than I'm used to. Right. Because I know the inner realm changing from choose craft or strength and split left and right actually changed in the third. So third edition got rid of the original inner realm. And I don't know when the crown of command was replaced by a boss fight. I do know the Batman moving around is an expansion for Talisman fourth edition called the Reaper. Well, and there's the Reaper like a lot. I mean, the board. Talisman fourth came oh, out yeah. in, in 2007 and they just keep yeah. putting out a new expansion every year. No, oh, it's crazy. So here's some of the stories. So there was a hostage that we kept leaving behind in a closet yes there was a hostage so one of the cards was the hostage you moved on the hostage he goes in your spot but then you could move anywhere on the board but you had to leave the hostage behind and we kept using it to teleport to where this closet was because this closet had tons of money in it so whenever you we get we i got locked in the closet because i missed i missed a turn and then later we found a policeman in the same closet there was lots of coming out of the closet jokes because that's kind of thing that happened it was the locker room. That's the one I was trying to think of. Locker room was filled with smoke and Robin, I think. So we were like, Robin, Robin's in the steamy locker room. I'm just looking at a picture of fourth edition using the Cataclysm board. And I mean, this thing is, well, if you turned it 90 degrees, it wouldn't fit on your table. 
Yeah, that's um, what I said. It's, They're nuts. I mean, it's because I mean, they've got the cards laid out all around it. And it's, yeah, it's just that the cards are supposed huge. to be outside. It's like six yeah. foot by four foot. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. Now, I got to admit, that's the other hack we did. We just put the damn cards on the board. Part of the fact of the board being so big, there's lots of room. So right. the, the third and fourth time or fifth, I don't even know we played. We just put the cards on the board. Right. But it's fine. I think you'd enjoy it. It's just, it's that kind of game where you, it's definitely a beer and pretzel. It's a chat with your friends. It's a, you only have to kind of half pay attention to what you're doing. Right. So you're playing a game while hanging out and laughing about silly stuff. Characters are all cool. The abilities are kind of neat. There's still some overpowered ones, in my opinion. Anyone who could get a feat anytime they spend it is just overpowered in that game. Because then you can just be like, feet, 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 feet. Yeah, I can't quite tell if if they've if it's left, right, or if it's uh if it's straight around on that fourth. No, it, that it's game. definitely straight around and fourth. Like you definitely oh, okay. have to go in a in a circle. There's more spots. That's part of why the board's bigger. Is the third round became bigger. Right. Where before it was only six. It was uh, yeah six in the original. I've got a picture. I shared it on Twitter where I've got my original board sitting on this board, and this is literally like four times larger. It's right. crazy. But I don't know. I think I I don't know. I've yet to play six player. I think it'd be kind of fun. But then they're going to have the problem they had where someone's going to get left behind. Yep. As long as you're okay with that story. But there, it definitely hit a point where May kind of checked out because it's like, well, I can't win. Like, there's no well, yeah. way. I, I can... mean, it's, it's like that game we, you and I had of Corridor the other day. It's yeah. like, I really need to just well, end this because yeah, there's, there's no resign. point in continuing. Yeah. Um, it was better with four than three, or than two especially. I think it'd be good with six. I just don't know how long it'd play, but it's still, it's not going to be six or eight hours like the original. Right. 